everybody, I'm Debbie Montgomery Johnson, founder of the nonprofit The Woman Behind the Smile, and your host of Stand Up and Speak Up, a show that is about each and every one of us. Many of us have something, something we're hiding, something we're ashamed of, something not through no fault of our own or through our own making we keep hidden, and that in turn keeps us hidden from each other and the world. Good people go through terrible situations. Wise people know when and how to let it go. Everything that happens to us helps us grow, and while it may be hard to see it right away, the most important thing to do is to change your perception about your circumstances. Regardless of what your personal experiences or traumas have been, this showcase series is designed to ignite the light in you, as well as providing safe harbor, education, personal growth, and resources so that no matter where you are on your journey, you'll have the courage to move on when you're ready. Stand Up and Speak Up features ordinary people who've been through extraordinary situations and struggles and found the courage to step out from behind their smiles and speak up about their experiences and the lessons gleaned from those experiences. Everybody heals at a different pace, and we recognize that. So come on in, have a listen, and enjoy the ride at your own speed. It's a beautiful day in South Florida. I like to say it's another beautiful day in paradise, and I welcome everybody here today. I'm Debbie Montgomery Johnson, and I have my friend Candy Parker on the line. And Miss Candy, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm so excited that you're you're on, Candy. It's really interesting. I was thinking the other day about how we met, and it's probably been a few years because you are the publisher of my book, The Woman Behind the Smile, and you're the one that really kicked me in the pants to get it done. And I was thinking. We go back to our days at Women's Prosperity Network, WPN, and uh, briefly, can you just tell everybody how WPN has affected you and how you knew about WPN? Well, a friend of mine um, said to me, you should get on the Wow Wednesday call, and this was back in 2012. And so I listened to her, and I went on the call, and I was really impressed. And um, Nancy, Nancy Matthews offered a coaching um, call, so I took it, and I knew right then I was in the right place. And I uh, went to all the other calls <laughs> that they have, which is an extensive library that they have, and I joined and um, became a chapter leader. Uh, I think it was August of 2012, and opened up a chapter in Tallahassee, Florida. You're coming to us from northern Florida, up in Tallahassee? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have have you always lived there? Uh, No, but I've been here for over 35 years. You're practically a native. (laughs) (laughs) So... So just to, I wanted everybody to know that WPN is the Women's Prosperity Network, and many of my guests over the years have been Women's Prosperity Network sisters, so we call them sisters by other misters. And and Candy is one of the leaders in, in the Tallahassee is the leader in the Tallahassee chapter. Um, but I came to her because it's a group of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial women who have had a variety of of careers, and many have been in corporate and have moved into their own businesses. Um, Candy herself, quick bio, she's a publisher, author, artist, certified law of attraction coach, a leader in the global, Global Women's Prosperity Network. Here's one I'm going to salute. She's an Army veteran. And what did you do in the Army? I was, first I was a medic, and then I was a social worker. Well, thank you very much for your service. And uh, so now we've got the Army, and I was Air Force, and Dr. Tim's on the line, and he was Navy, so we've got it covered. The reason I, I do stand up and speak up is because I want to find out about people's life stories. We all have something that has happened to us that we've hit rock bottom, and or what we feel is rock bottom, and we've found a way out of it. And I didn't know about your story, but you wrote to me and said that um, you lost your husband, and your byline here was poverty stricken widow becomes millionaire. Well, that definitely piqued my interest in how that could happen. So, can you tell me a little bit about what that story is? Yeah, um, back in 2004, I had a life changing experience. My husband passed away, and on the day that I buried him, my brother was murdered in another country. My. So, uh, it was like a one two punch. And, you know, it all depends on how you handle or look at things. And I've always been a positive person. 
But here I was thinking, okay, well, I have to start my life again. I was 53 years old, and I was like, what do I do? You know, I have a mortgage. I had stopped working um, to take care of my husband for a year, so I went back to be in an acupuncture position. And um, I was, you know, just getting by, but then I, I saw the movie The Secret. And that just totally um, inspired me to think more positive, to start looking at uh, the trainings that, that they were offering, the different teachers in The Secret. And, um, and that's what really kept me going. Now, what was inside my head as I was learning all this stuff was all excitement and how I was, you know, I wanted, I wanted to be a millionaire. <laughs> but what was outside my head that wasn't the same as what was inside my head. But really, what you think about comes about. And I didn't know what was going to happen to me, but all I did was put one foot in front of the other and uh, looked at all the positive things that I could look at, held to my vision, put signs around with uh, sayings that inspired me. And one of the sayings was, when I have inspired thought, I act on it. And I, um, I was driving. This was, so this was 2004. And in, in 2005, I went to Harvecker's um, intensive, uh, what was it called? Um, Millionaire Mind Intensive, which really inspired me. And... And so I started listening to that only in the car, that and the secret audiobook, and those are the only things I listened to. So I had a, uh, a sign on my dashboard that says, when I have inspired thought, I act on it. And one day I saw a sign when I was getting gas, and it says, would you like to be a millionaire? I was like, why, yes, I would. <laughs> and, and it had these holiday raffle tickets. Now, I had never bought a lottery ticket in my life. And so um, I, I considered it. But those tickets were pretty expensive. They were $20. But it was the day after Christmas. And I said, this is my Christmas present to myself. I'm just going to get one. And I got it and actually won. <laughs> I won the million dollars. <laughs> so uh, it, it changed my, another life-changing experience. That was the three years after my husband passed away. And, and then I... I started to, I said, you know, I want to write about this. And I started to write about it and realized that maybe I could, you know, help somebody else with it. And so um, I, got my, I got my book published in 2012. I published it. But it was a real struggle. You know, as some people might, when they self-publish, they might figure out that this isn't as easy as it seems. And so I thought, well, Maybe I could teach other people, or maybe I could publish other people's books. Maybe I could make the whole process easier for other people. And I wanted to start a publishing company, because I figured if Louise Hay could start a publishing company in her living room at 60 years old, so could I. So uh, I, I hired coaches to teach me. I hired book designer. Uh, I have been a book designer for 20 years. I hired other coaches. And I got my publishing um, business off of the ground. Now, this is where Women's Prosperity Network comes in. There were a lot of women there that had a lot to offer, but they didn't have books. So I started making offers about uh, publishing books for them, and, and that's how I started. Well, okay, I, I've got to go back. I mean, I've got some aha moments here, and I, I'm <laughs> sorry. We'll go back. I'm really sorry about your husband passing away. You're about the same age as I was when Lou died, and I know how that can just change your life. Right. And uh, how long have you guys been married? 24 years. 24 years. Okay. Any children? No. No. But you had a full life. You were working. He was working. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, and I, didn't, I forgot to mention, when he died, his income died with him. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's something that I learned. Uh, I was working when Lou passed away, but fortunately um, he had a company that I took over. I didn't know how to run it, but I learned. Um, but that was one thing, that was a real aha moment for me and a lot of Lou's friends afterwards is like, guys, if you don't have 
life insurance or something that your wife can can take over or understands, then she might lose the home, she might lose, I mean, obviously we'll lose the income. That's a really devastating family event if there's not preparation. Mm-hmm. Correct. And, and it sounds to me like you, you, well, you told me poverty stricken, you were down and out. And, and uh, I mean, I had not ever bought a lottery ticket and this makes me think maybe I should. My dad gave me one once. Um, but a million dollars, and you kind of just brushed over that, a million dollars is a lot of money. I know. I've given it away. I've lost it. So when you got that million, I'm sure you didn't get all of it. The state of Florida got some of it. What did, uh-huh. you, do, what did you do with it? Is that what you started the, the publishing company with? Yeah, that is. And, and I, I spent a lot of money on my education, on, on the okay. things that I chose, not formal education, by hiring coaches to teach me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I found that to be, I upgraded, you know, I upgraded things that needed to be done on my property and, um, and you know, help people out. And it was one of the most exciting experiences of my life. Did you find that there were people coming out of the woodwork to be friends and family after that? Because so many people would just get into trouble after winning a lot of, lot of money right off the bat. Yeah, and I found that I lost friends, too. Oh, really? That Why was that? That was interesting. They couldn't relate to me anymore in their own mm-hmm. minds. Uh, it was weird. It was very weird. No, it happens. And you move into a different place, and as you... You could have played the victim. You could have said, you know, I've lost my husband, I've lost my income, I've lost everything, so now what? Um, mm-hmm. But instead, I get the impression that you're like, okay, so now what? Just change the Exactly. <laughs> now what? Yeah. So now what? And, and so you made the positive out of that pain, uh, which is so important for so many of us just because yeah. life happens, right? What is the name of your book, the first book? Uh, Shift Happens, How I Became a Million... Um, how I won a million dollars with the law of attraction. That is cool. So shift happens. And we've heard that. A lot of folks have used that. But back in the day, <coughs> shift, it sh- how did you shift? I know we've talked about it a little bit, but what are the steps that you take? So we have people that have hit rock bottom, and we're trying to give them hope. What is the first step that you took to say, I can make it? I wrote my story of, uh of, of how I went from not having anything to winning the money. And then I asked questions and did a workbook in the back of the book. Um, you know, how to, how to keep yourself in a positive vibration. Um, if you want something, like people say, oh, I want a million dollars. Well, what's under the money? What do you really want? You know, and um, how to, the steps that I took for my dream, step by step I moved forward. And I think that anybody can do that if they keep their focus on, on positive things. There are particular things that you shouldn't do. It's like stop watching the news. Stop feeding your mind with negative things. Those negative things are always going to be there. And for instance, like somebody says, well, aren't you worried about like a hurricane because I'm in Florida? And it's like, if I'm going to have a hurricane here, somebody's going to tell me about it. So don't watch the news. Um, look for uh, positive people to be around. Do things that make you laugh because you have a choice. You have a choice to think positive or think negative. And it's up to the person to focus on good things. And when you, what you, you know, they say that saying, what you think about comes about. That really is true. That really is true because you're attracting more of what you're thinking about into your life. So it's all the more reason to be thinking positive. I love that thought. And, and that's how you take control of where you go. And, mm-hmm. and you did that, and it, and it was fun and exciting. And, and uh, Now, did you have any naysayers? I know you said you lost a couple of friends. Oh, but. yeah. Yeah, I did, actually. It's really funny. I had friends uh, who laughed at me, you know, because I was uh, taking these classes and I was doing the exercises that were recommended, and, um, but they would laugh at me. And I was like, oh, okay, 
well, and then I'd move on. I wouldn't even mention it again to people who laugh at me. And I'd move on to other people who were encouraging, there you friends go. and family. There you go. Uh, I found that too once. Uh, I think I've mentioned this to you when I, when I first told my story and I, and I looked at a lady and she happened to be in WPN and she gave me this, what I call the stink eye. Mm-hmm. At that moment, I'm like, okay, so she's not the one I need to be talking to. <laughs> you know? Right. I need to talk to the lady beside her that's bobbing her head up and down. And uh, so you did that. And ha- why publishing? Were, as a child, were you always interested in reading in books? or? No, well, not really. I was more of an artist, and my mom encouraged that from the time I was 13 years old. Uh, I come from... Um, I'm the oldest of eight children, and yet she gave me a special spot in the house where I could do my art, and she fostered that. Publishing came about because of what happened to me, and I thought it was a story that I could share that might help somebody else. And so I, um, I joined Steve Harrison's Quantum Leap program, which was for authors on getting your uh, books published. And interestingly enough, I went up, up to a, an agent. We were supposed to show our stuff to an agent. And I only had 100 pages at the time, right? And he took it and he, and he threw it down on the table and went, this is nothing. I was like, okay, well, that's your opinion. You know, I just took it and I didn't let that stop me either. I just fleshed it out and said, well, maybe I'll add a workbook to it and just kept on going. And, and that, that program helped me. It connected me with other authors and talking with other people. And Now, publishing has changed a lot over the years. Yep. Can yeah. you kind of explain that to the audience? Because some may know, some, some may be thinking, well, you know, to publish a book, you have to go to a big publishing house, and it costs a lot of money. And, blah, blah. and I mean, there's a lot involved. Explain how things yeah. have changed over the years, if you could. Yeah, it's, it's not like that anymore. Um, if you do get accepted by a traditional publishing house, you have to go there with your own following. They're not helping you with the following. They want to take what you've done and use it and then be the middleman. And you don't have to do that anymore. Um, w- when I publish books for people, uh, I don't keep any royalties. right? I don't keep the copyright or anything like that. I just provide the service so that they can get out there um, Anybody can do that now. You know, all the tools are out there now that weren't out there even back in 2010. Um, so it, it's getting easier, but it's also getting crowded. Okay, mm-hmm. I mean, billion, I don't know how many books there are on Amazon, but there must be a billion books on Amazon. So how how do you stand out? That's what it comes down to. Some people write a book because it's important to them. Some people write a book, and and I would call that vanity kind of a book. And then there's the legacy book because you're writing it for your family. And then there's um, books that that are helping other people. Um, There's all kinds of reasons. And there's children's books, which is a big market now. So there's – but the print-on-demand – is changing as well. Right now, it's changing. Uh, for instance, when I went to Ingram Spark, where that's a company, or one of the print on demand companies, they just put out something this week that said uh, they won't even print your book for 25 days. Okay, so you, you submit your book, you get, and it could be like, a, like, for instance, a hardcover. 25 days before they print it, and then you've got to get it, okay? So then the, you've got the shipping time, and that's a lot longer too because of the time of the year. So you have to really, if you're going to gear towards getting something for the holidays, you've got to start like way in advance. Um, so they're crowded. They're getting so much that they're starting to get selective. They used to be books that uh, what they call no-content books, you know, just a journal, a lined journal, or mm-hmm. blank pages, you know, they, don't all, they won't even take that anymore. Uh, you have to go to offset printer to get that done. So things are, are changing, and also with the Amazon printer too, uh, they're changing as well. But that's because it's getting very crowded. There was a big 
market for coloring books for a while. In fact, they're pretty, you know, they're still, they're still well and strong, but um, not like they used to be. Okay, but it, because, it is important to write a book. If you feel like you want to write a book, I think it's really important. I feel that, that for me, writing was very therapeutic, and it yeah. did turn out to be a help others book. Uh, but for me, it was a way to get some closure to what had happened, and it was necessary. But there's a process. And you're putting yourself out. You're putting yourself out there, Debbie. You know what I well, mean? Yeah. That, that's a scary thing, right there. Absolutely. Uh, but I had support. I had you, and I had uh, Judy Light, who was e- helping me edit, and then all the WPN girls kicking me in the pants. But for, it's important, and, and that's something that we talk about in, in SCARS, the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams. Getting the story out can take the emotions out of it. It makes, you know, it helps you to release the negative feelings you might have. It encourages the positive feelings. Um, it, for me, it was very, it was just a very therapeutic step. But journal writing is a good way to start. So. Mm-hmm. How do you encourage, like, when, I know there's a process, when someone comes to you, if somebody has, if it's listening to this, it, uh, has, a, it has an idea of, of a book, how do they start with you? What's the process? Well, it depends on how much they've gotten done. So let's say they don't have anything done, they just have an idea. Well, then, then the first thing to do is make an outline. So you just, like, what do you want to talk about? And you write down the things you want to talk about. And then you work that into an outline. And then those outli- that outline, those are your chapters. Now you can fill in the blanks. It can be as easy as that. And you don't have to have a lot of pages. Nowadays, um, the digital books are really hot. So you can have 20 pages and still have a book and get wow. it out there, your message. Yeah. And start to finish, how long does it take to do that? A digital book. Uh, uh, how long does it take who to do it, the writer <laughs> or the publisher? Okay, let's go to the because writer. Because the writer, the writer has, you know, writer's block sometimes, or they get scared, or should I take, should I say this, or whatever. I'll tell you what I did. I, I, kept, I had a little recorder, and I kept it with me. And when I had ideas, I would talk into the recorder. And then I would go and I would transcribe them, and I'd put them in a file. And I might just sit outside and have coffee one morning and just be dangling my feet in the pool, and I'll be thinking, and i get these great ideas. So then I would write in my notebook. So I'd have all my ideas, right? And then all I had to do was move them around cut and paste. And then as soon as I I started to do that, I realized, oh, this is starting to come together. And then you start filling in each section. It it really is easier. And here's another thing, too. Let's say you're not a good writer. Well, you can speak your book. If you just talk into a recorder and speak uh, what you want to say, then it can be transcribed put on paper, and then you can cut and paste and move it around. It's, it's a super easy way. Mm-hmm. Did you find that there was a better time of day that you would write? Morning, evening? No. no. Not for me. Because um, my, a lot of my ideas came when I was in the car, so I used the recorder. My best ideas come in the shower, so I have to wait you know, and, and write them down when I get out. Uh, no, I didn't find that to be true for me. But then again, I'm by myself. I don't have a family to take care of or, or, or chore. You know, I mean, I've got my own chores to do, animal chores and stuff like that. But no, I, I, um, it's, it's so different for everybody, like right. what the best time would be. And I think that sometimes people get stuck on that saying, well, I don't have, I can't write from 7 to 8 in the morning. I mean, I used to write at 6 in the morning because I still have a company, so I would get up early and I would get my you know, family out, husband out or whatever, and then I would, I would sit down and write. But like you, I found myself recently, because I also do write for your magazine, Positive Tribe Monthly, which we're going to talk mm-hmm. about. Um, Thank but you. some of the ideas come, the other day I was watching a movie in Colorado about wings over, wings over the Rockies, and they were talking about looking out the window of an airplane and seeing the portal, you know, it's kind of a portal to the universe. And they, mm-hmm. what a great story. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, but it, it is funny too how those ideas for for stories or articles can just come from what you're observing. So it's be observant. Look around you. And yeah. And kind of pause. Take a pause. It cracks me up because I I wrote an article about P A W S pause of my cat. Um, uh-huh. I needed to pause my life to slow down, and my cat came over and started, you know, how they do that kneading thing with their paws on your chest. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. what a great article. The cat slowed me down, and it was fun to write about the cat. But it's the silly things. But it, it just gets your imagination going. And yeah, you've you got to use your imagination. That's a tool. That's the only tool I really had when I didn't have anything. I had my imagination. Right. But you acted on it. That's right, like where you went back to say if you had a thought, you know, if you got inspired, then act on it. And mm-hmm. th- I think that a lot of people get stuck on the acting part, the, the moving. Yeah. Because they're scared and they don't know. So that's why we're doing this show is how it, it's not hard. It's a process. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, <laughs> like I needed you because you sat me down and said, okay, if you want to get the book out by a certain date, we have to back it up by months to have mm-hmm. this done and then the next one. So there are deadlines if you're trying to get a book out at a particular time. Right. Because you as the, you as the publisher, okay, I, I've got my stuff written. I give it to you now as the publisher. What's your process? Well, then it gets edited, all right? And then the editor works with you. And then once, once it's edited, then it goes into formatting, and I format it so that I learned to format as um, to industry standards from like a uh, traditional publishing house, so that it comes out looking professional. Mm-hmm. And then while that's but while the editing's going on, I'm working on the cover, and the cover is very important. Yes, a, you you do judge a book by its cover. And um, so all the factors, that's where my art background comes in, um, all the factors of um, uh, color and composition and, you know, what type of font and what image is going to be put on there that's going to say what the book is about. Okay, so that there is a process and you've got the training. And so that's why a lot of people, like you said, like to self-publish, but self-publishing, is that doing it by yourself or what you're yeah. doing is, what would you? Um, I would call myself a hybrid publisher. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm, I'm publishing it for you, but I'm not um, doing like what other, what, what like the traditional publisher would do which mm-hmm. would keep, keep most of your royalties and tell you, hey, you need to go and talk about your book here and here and here and here. You know, uh, I, I don't do that. Uh, but there's one other par- part of creating a book that is called the proof process. So let's say I get uh, completely finished, you approve it, you like it, then we, we get it printed and look at it. Because that's where you're going to find even more mistakes and whatever. Um, and so the proof process takes at least three weeks. Well, you do an absolute beautiful job. I mean, I was I was so impressed with with my book. And and it, again, it wasn't to make money. And that's what a lot of people are like. Wow, you write the book, you're making a lot of money. It's not to for me. It wasn't for that. It was to be. It was to get the story out so that other people were aware of what's going on. And I love how you put it. It's you know you, when you become an author, you become an authority in what you're speaking about. Makes you look like the expert that you are. Exactly. You know? And we're all expert in something. We just have to believe in ourselves and believe that we are. And true. And get it out there. Um, like you and I were talking earlier about my. Your, your golden retrievers and, and everybody, if you, if you love golden retrievers, if you love dogs, Candy did a YouTube video and it was called God Made a Dog. And on the ninth day, God Made a Dog. And it's her golden retrievers. And the first one I looked at was Bailey and Bristol. And I'm looking at those dogs thinking, oh my gosh, those are my dad's puppies. My dad wrote his book, My 50 Golden Years, and his golden retrievers right on the front. And it, is, it was amazing. You know, how we can be inspired by our animals 
which you have done several now. And can you tell us? Yeah, you um, that's a that. That's at iCandyVideos.com. Well, they're fun. Now, you have do you have dogs now? Not right now. My last one passed away, oh. and I'm I've got a horse. Who's <laughs> like a dog? Name? Because when it's time for e to eat, he comes up and uses his <laughs> hoof and knocks on the deck. <laughs> Nuzzles him off. Um, I know. How, you know, my dad's golden. Zoo. It was very difficult, but joyful writing that book because every time. He wrote about a puppy. He had all these great memories of it, but then the puppy died, and he had to relive that. And it's it was it was. I remember the editing process for my father was was very emotional, but now looking at it, it's such a nice tribute to the 50 years. Yeah, ago. my golden my golden retriever inspired me so much. I mean, I wrote a children's book about him. Let's and, hear about that. I love that book. What's the name of it? Positive Pete and the Seven Magic Words. And what are you doing with Positive Pete, or, or what did you do, wh why did you get Positive Pete out? What audience was that? Well, the Seven Magic Words um, are how can I look at this differently, and okay. that came from a course, a course in Miracles that I took like 30 years ago, and I said this is a really good message. How can I make this a message for children? And so that's what that's. That's the uh, the start of it, and then I had a lot of photographs of my dog, and so I turned the photographs into illustrations, and and did little um, problems and solutions. Through, what throughout. a great what a great inspiration for that! How can I look at this differently? That's mm -hmm. not just for kids. <laughs> That's for I know, <laughs> but let's start the kids off good. <laughs> Absolutely. So positive, Pete. How can I look at things differently? That's that's terrific. So I've got so many things going through my head right now on what you've done and oh, I, 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 a lot of people want to write book write books to make money, and you can mm -hmm. do that. My recommendation is write small books, make them digital because they're consumables, and you can make them uh, at a very attractive price like two ninety nine or three ninety nine, and people can afford to buy them. And a lot of people are digital now. So that would be if you wanted to have like a, a Kindle empire, that would be the way to do it. And then there are so many places that you can put digital books um, besides Amazon. So um, if, if somebody really wants to write books for money, that would be the way to go. So you have a course on that? Was it write a Kindle yeah, book in a weekend? Mm -hmm. Write a Kindle book in a weekend. And and I would have live events where we'd go for a weekend to a retreat center, and by the end of the weekend, you would have published your book. It would be up and running, start did to that, finish. Did that get put on hold because of the pandemic? Yeah, it did. And so I'm trying to convert that. I'm not trying. I am converting that over to a digital product. Okay. That would be a great video or mm -hmm. even a webinar or something, a weekend webinar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was called Write a Kindle Book in a Weekend. So Candy, right. how, how can people contact you if they want to flush out an idea? Um, it, well, that information is on my website, parkerhousebooks.com, and my email address is candy, with an I, C-A-N-D-I, at parkerhousebooks.com. Okay. What's next? I know that you have been working, you have helped, what, 300, over 350 people publish books, me included. Right. What is next for you? Well, I took on a big project with Linda Fostick, um, and we're, we've been working on it for a year. We haven't launched it yet, um, but we are, again, working with children and working with dogs. They happen to be yellow labs, and they're called the science labs. And we're going to be teaching four to seven-year-old uh, children um, in science. It's going to be a membership where they get a book and they get activities, they get a discovery box. And we're getting really close to actually launching that. It's thesciencelabs.com. We haven't launched, but if you want to take a peek at it, that's where we're at. Yeah, I think I actually, uh, when I talked to Linda, when she started this, another WPN friend, um, uh -huh. I, I had mentioned to her that that would be really good, something for my grandkids, because yeah. I, 
I have two in Hawaii, two in Dallas. I don't get to see them often, and I'm always looking for something that they'll get regularly to remind them of grandma. And right. It's always kind of fun to slip in some educational stuff at the same time. So I've seen some of those things, and, and the science labs are really cute. Okay, everybody, coming soon, the science lab with <laughs> Linda Fostick and Candy Parker. Um, well, I have Dr. Tim McGinnis on the line. Tim is the founder of the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams, and Tim and I have talked a lot about writing and the importance of writing and getting your story out uh, as, as a process of recovery. And Tim's actually put out a bunch of books recently to help our, our organization. And Tim, are you there? I am. Hey, um, I wanted to bring you into this conversation um, because I know that you're very pro very prolific writer, uh, articles of thousands of articles. So Tim, um, conversation here, you know, you want to? Yes, there there are a lot of options available to people that want to publish, and I think one comment that I would make is if you're not an experienced writer the way to become experienced is just to write. Write lots. Um, write long blog posts. Um, maybe create your own website where you can publish essays on topics that you care about. It doesn't matter what the subject matter really is. Writing is a skill that you develop over time. And the more you write, the better you will become as a communicator and more disciplined in the process. Pay a lot of attention to things like grammar and structure. Uh, there's a wonderful tool that's now available online called Grammarly that is free. It will help you improve your writing tremendously. But don't believe everything that it says. When it comes to spelling, maybe. But when it comes to grammar, it's 97% accurate. That 3% can make the difference between something readable and enjoyable or not. But it will help you. The, the reality is, yes, you can publish in a lot of different ways. Should you? No. Not every story is worthy of a book. That's another consideration that I would suggest. If you want to tell a story, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can write on a website, a blog, and, and put that out there. One of the values of a book is, is, as your guest said, is creating legacy or familial treasures that will preserve something in writing forever as long as there's a copy of the book. One of the things that I would also suggest is write under your own name unless you're really worried about slander and defamation, write under your own name because if you write under another name, it will never get attached to you. So those are some. Now, we chose a different path. We chose a path where it was 100% under our control and it was easy. Not everybody should do this. I do recommend that you approach publishers, um, a company like your guests or – the larger publishers is going to be incredibly difficult to get a book through their review and acceptance process, and it will, it will result in a thousand rejections before you find somebody who says even they'll like it. So it just depends upon you what you feel is the right approach, but I recommend starting with just writing, get affirmation, get confirmation by people who read you that what you're doing has value and merit to them. And then once you've accumulated enough, um, this is one of the shortcuts that, although it's not much of a shortcut, but it is a shortcut that I've taken, is I've written probably close to 7,000 major articles on the topic of online crimes. And from that, using it as a experimental platform to throw out ideas and see what sticks and polish and refine the approaches over the years, I have a vast reserve of content that very quickly can be adapted into a book. 
Are we doing it right, wrong, don't know. That's for our readers to decide. But it is an approach. So if you already have a blog, if you're already out there writing, you're the perfect candidate to move to the next step of creating a book. Why a book and why not just continue to write online? I think that there's a psychological value in holding a book in your hand that has not been replaced by the web, not been replaced by Kindle, not been replaced by anything. Because first, it's analog. You can carry it with you wherever you want to go. You don't have to look at a tiny screen on your phone and try and read something. You can hold it in your hands. You can put it by the bedside table, on the kitchen table, wherever you happen to be, and read it regardless of what your Internet connection is. The other aspect is it's paper. You can make notes. You can highlight things. It's yours to do what you wish with. I think also we're losing our ability to read by virtue of online publishing. A book makes it easier for you to just read everything that's in front of you. You can still skim a book. Many of us who went through college many times for many degrees had to do this by, by necessity. But nevertheless, it reduces the enjoyment. The two forms of books that I personally enjoy most are books on paper and audiobooks where someone will read every word in the book unabridged. So I would encourage anyone who is thinking about becoming an author, start a blog, publish, publish lots, write lots. And then when you think you've got enough, write a book. Yep. Uh, holding a book in your hand is really important. I love holding a book, but I love listening to the book if it's the author's voice. If I know the author, that's really important. Um, but Candy, when Tim was talking about blogs, let's talk about your positive tribe. Tell us what it is, and if people are aspiring authors, you're looking for contributors. Yes, I'm always looking for contributors. The, the ma it's a magazine about uh, thinking positive, living positive. The stories are uplifting. Um, and I do reject a lot of stories, I have to say, because, or I have them rewrite them, because it, it has to be uplifting. Because that's the whole point of, of the magazine. Um, we just passed four years with it. It's a free subscription, free uh, at positivetribe.com. And um, uh, Debbie, uh, you've been a, a contributor for years now. Um, I have, and I want to take my articles and make them a book. <laughs> well, I'm actually doing that. Uh, so you don't have to do it. I'll do it for you. Um, but yeah, I'm actually doing that because I think that um, it, it, it's, it's great to have someone's stories all put together. Um, but anyway, I am looking for uh, writers all the time, and so if you think that you'd be interested in something like that, just check out the, you know, get yourself a subscription and see what you think. And it is free. But you know, I would like to go back to the physical, having the physical book. I love having a physical book to read. Mm -hmm. But as a, um, as an author, I want my book to be in all categories. So the book will be a. a paperback or a hardback, depending on what I'm doing, and uh, a digital book. And now I want to go into having my books in audio. So the, the more, and then, then there's also video. This is another aspect too. You could take your book and do a, a like, like a movie trailer, you could do a book trailer about your book. Because people are always looking on YouTube. So you might catch some people that way. The audio book, I actually, uh, Peggy, um, Peggy Hansen was on earlier. Peggy and I did the audio of my first book that you published. And mm -hmm. we had such a great time because I had been inspired by another uh, author who had done a podcast in between chapters. And so that's what we did with The Woman Behind the Smile on audio, on Audible, is that in between 
uh, every other chapter, we did a podcast. We did a what's next, what happened since I wrote the book, and it was so fun. We, we really had a great conversation about what had taken place since I wrote the book and, and how much I learned about scams and all that after the fact. And I laughed. I, go, I listen to the book, and I, I really enjoy it better when I listen to it, and I listen to those extra additions to it. Uh, so you can, once you've written your book, you can edit it, do a second version of it, uh, do it on audio, and add to it. There's, there, there's a lot. The Positive Tribe for, is fun, and it's, it's Positive Tribes, right, with a B or Positive Tribe? It's PositiveTribe.com. It's a free monthly magazine. It is fun. There are a variety of writers, uh, all positive information. I really encourage you to get it. Uh, it's, it's fun for me to write in it. I, and I, I love Candy's enthusiasm and her, her encouragement. And like sometimes I need that pressure of the deadlines, like, Deb, got an article, get it in. And I've got the ideas, but sometimes as a writer, you just need a little bit of push and say, okay, get it done. And uh, as Tim mentions, there are different ways to do it. I will sit down and I'll write the article in hours, just get it over with, uh, and I'll sit back and I'll just I'll look and I'll laugh. I'm like, that's fun. Where did this come from? And I was, cause it's inside of us, and it's just waiting to come out. Uh, so I encourage people to do that. And it's been several years since you've done this. What, 2017, the magazine yeah. came out. So you're in your fourth year. And uh, yeah. it's wonderful. It's a wonderful magazine. Actually, we just put this last issue was issue 48. So. Perfect, perfect. And uh, so thank you for doing that. And we'll try to we'll get the word out about that because I, I think it's a really fun magazine. Uh, so here's one last question. With all these books, and, and we'll read them for a reason and a season, but what do you do with your library of books if you don't have room or you're moving? What do we do with books? We used to take them to the library, but is there a place that we can... Donate our books? Yeah, take them to the Goodwill Bookstore. Because if you're donating them, I mean, if you take them to the library, they'll put them on a, a table uh, to give away. Uh, where they sell, you know, sell books, uh, use books. But okay. um, I take mine to the Goodwill Bookstore. I saw on, on a show last night, uh, it was Chicago, uh, Chicago Fire, if anybody watches that. But they put up a little, looked like a firehouse outside of the firehouse, and in it, they had a library. It was like a giveaway library. And I'm thinking, what a great idea. We need to have corner, <laughs> corner boxes where we share our books. Um, well, they do that here where I live. We have these little boxes everywhere where you just go and you take a book or you leave a book. Really? I think it's a great idea. I have so many books I would love to share that way because um, I think – if something happens to me, my kids are going to go, Mom, what are we going to do with all these books that you've collected over the years? Um, but I love them. They each have a special meaning. So, Candy Parker, thank you so much for being my guest today. This hour has just flown by. I honor your, your military service and the things that you've done and the, the publishing that you're doing. It's just phenomenal. And I'm so excited. That, you know, I'm honored that you, had, you were the publisher of my first book. It was... It was a great experience, and anybody that wants to be a writer or wants to open, you know, do a book, contact Candy, and it's uh, you can write to her at Candy C A N D I at ParkerHouseBooks.com. Check out the iCandy Books trailer. Um, actually, I got it iCandyBooksTrailer.com, but you said the video is i. Candy. The others are iCandyVideos.com. Okay, and iCandyVideos.com, and then go to ParkerHouseBooks.com for the, yeah. the publishing company. Um, and connect with me on Facebook if you like. Absolutely. And if you're up in the Tallahassee area, Women's Prosperity Network, she's the chief WPNer up there. Uh, I, we've got a lot of friends that are up in that area, and they're just terrific women. If you are looking for a group of, of wonderful uh, entrepreneurial women, uh, and a few men, but predominantly women. So, Candy, thank you so much for all you're doing for uh, – for the publishing world, for educating us on how to do it, because it, it can be a daunting thing if you don't know. So everybody, knowledge is power. Candy's got the knowledge. Look her up. And thanks again, Candy, for, for being here. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, my, my pleasure and deep bow of appreciation for having me. 
Absolutely. And everybody watch out for their new venture, The Science Labs, with Linda Fostek and Candy Parker. Uh, go look up her book, Shift Happens, How I Won a Million Dollars with the Law of Attraction, uh, How to Write a Kindle Book in a Weekend. Oh my gosh, there's so much that we could do right now. So thanks, Candy. Thanks, audience. And uh, we will all talk to you next week. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to Stand Up and Speak Up. We are dedicated to encouraging you to remove the mask of embarrassment and being your best self. If you've been a victim of a scam or cybercrime, please visit againstscams.org for assistance and guidance about options and recovery. SCARS, the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams, is an incorporated nonprofit crime victims assistance organization based in Miami, supporting scam victims worldwide. If you can, please make a small donation to help the victims around the world receive the help that they need. This episode has been sponsored by BenfoComplete.com, a vitamin supplement company that supports happy and healthy hands and feet for those with neuropathy. If you or anyone you know struggles with the pins and needles or numbness in their hands and feet, check out our Benfo teaming products at BenfoComplete.com and use the special code STANDUP for 5% discount on your purchase. Again, thanks everybody for being here with us today. Go to my website, TheWomanBehindTheSmile.com for additional information and resources. Check out my YouTube channel and subscribe and follow the replays of all of our great guests. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks very much for being here.